Good morning and welcome to Parish Mass on this second Sunday of Easter, coming to you from the united benefice of Holy Innocence and St. Mark here in South Norwood. And you are very welcome from wherever you are joining us. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. As we prepare to receive from God in word and sacrament, we say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we come to our prayers of penitence when we bring to God those times when we didn't love as we should have loved one another, love God, love ourselves. Jesus Christ, a risen Master and a triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray our collect for today, the second Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and the truth, through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now listen to our readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan 
and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of all that, all of us are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 16, and the response is, O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land upon those who are noble amongst the people. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land indeed. I have a goodly heritage. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. We sing our first hymn.
Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive for evermore. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Jesus answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And now for our sermon today, it is brought to us by Cicelyn. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in our sight, O oh God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. John chapter 20, verse 29. Picture the scene. It's as if night has suddenly fallen and the church is dark, visibility low. In the gloom, a man makes his way to the front and stands facing us. What until now has been an ordinary Sunday morning service is becoming anything but ordinary. Daylight returns. The stranger speaks. My name is Thomas and I'm here to tell you my story. We look at each other in bewilderment. Who did he say he is? Where has he come from? Thomas? Thomas who? Yes, Thomas, he continues. Doubting Thomas, Thomas the twin. Thomas who said he would go with Jesus, even if it meant dying with him. Thomas, who needed hard evidence before he would believe Jesus was alive, that Thomas. We listen to him, spellbound, as he does indeed tell us his story. The story Thomas tells is how he and the other disciples were terrified and ran away from the soldiers and from Jesus. 
they ran back to where just a short time before they had shared their last meal together. They locked the doors and hid themselves away, full of shame and terror. And there they stayed until morning, when Mary found them and told them about an open and empty tomb. Two of them, Peter and John, rushed to see, while the rest of them stayed put, locked in, still afraid. Eventually, Thomas recalls he couldn't stand it any longer. The streets might have been dangerous, but he had to get out of that room, away from the reminders of that last meal. When he eventually returned, he found the disciples overexcited, all talking at once. We've seen him, they told him, filled with some sort of supernatural energy. Thomas was speechless, as if a great boulder had knocked him off his feet taking his breath away and shattering his sense of reality. Then came the anger, white hot burning anger. Why had the others had this experience and not him? Why hadn't they asked Jesus to stay until he returned? Why had Jesus come when he wasn't there? How dare he? Even that shocking thought flashed through his mind. How dare Jesus exclude him? His refusal to believe came from that anger and fear. He wasn't going to believe unless he saw him, like the others had, and touched those wounds. Why should he? As Thomas recalls, that was a long, long week for him. He tells us how he was locked into his own mind, his own misery and fear. He locked out the pleadings of the others, their attempts to persuade him to believe, to eat or even drink. He locked them out, surely as they had locked their doors against their enemies. Then Thomas recalls, Jesus appeared again out of nowhere. He looked straight at him and told him in essence that he was loved and he did belong. Jesus offered Thomas precisely the proof that he had demanded, although by that time Thomas had already knew within him the certainty he was longing for. When he uttered those words, my Lord and my God, he knew he had spoken the truth. While Thomas is speaking, we become aware of another presence among us, a presence as light and elusive as breath, yet powerful and life-giving. My friends, says Thomas, I believed because I saw Jesus alive after his death. I tell my story so that you may come to believe without having that experience yourselves. I tell you my story so that you may see that our Lord and God loves us and forgives our lack of belief, frees us to forgive ourselves. I've come to unlock tightly closed minds and hearts and to let in the breath of the Holy Spirit. I speak so that you too may come to believe fully that Jesus is the Son of God, and to find new life in his name and in all its abundance. The church is suddenly full of a blazing light, radiating from that still elusive presence, a light so bright we have to cover our eyes. And out of that light comes a new voice, clear and true. Peace be with you, the voice says, as the light fades and a gentle breeze touches our faces, leaving us with a sense of new life. Amen.
We say together the words of the Creed as we affirm our faith in God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we pray in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ as we pray to the Father. We pray to Jesus who is present with us to eternity. The response to Jesus, Lord of life, is in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to this and every nation. We pray especially for our leaders as they continue to work with the relevant authorities to bring this COVID-19 to an end. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry and nourish us all with your word. As we pray for your church throughout the world, and we give you thanks for Justin and John, our Archbishops, for Christopher and Jonathan, Richard and Carraway, our Bishops in this diocese, for all priests and people in their care. And especially today on this second Sunday of Easter, we pray for Lambeth South Deanery and for Christ Church in Stretton. And for their vacancy, we pray that they find a new incumbent that is right for them and their community to lead them in the next chapter of their ministry. We pray also for Christ Church School. And for the wider Anglican community, we pray for the Church of Ireland, for its bishops, its priests, and all its people. We pray for our link dioceses in Zimbabwe, that God would bless their children, transform their leaders, heal their communities, and grant them peace for Jesus Christ's sake. Jesus, Lord of life, hear our prayer. Jesus, good shepherd who gave your life for the sheep, Recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick, and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. And in our community today, we pray for those who live on Manor Road, Market Parade, Portland Road, and Merton Road. And for those who are sick in our community, today we pray especially for Enid and Helen, Alec and Linda. 
We pray for Abdul and the Conte family in their bereavement, for Marcia and the Bogle family in their bereavement, and also for Deepa and her family. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life. We give you thanks for Marlene, Pahal Haji, Sharma, Maggie and David, and for all who have died and believed in you, and for all whose faith was known only to you. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us, accept our prayers, and be with us always. Amen. God of mercy, you know us and love us and hear our prayer. Keep us in the eternal fellowship of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now we sing our next hymn. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks almighty and eternal father and in these days of easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works for by the mystery of his passion Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness. While angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Granted by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far, the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Blessed Mary, Saint Joseph, the Holy Innocents, Saint Mark, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed to be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of all sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Lord God, our Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life, and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin, and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for being present with us again today. Do join us, if you can, for evening prayer at 6 o'clock today, and that will be led by Cicelyn, as usual for those of you who attend 6 p.m. evening prayer on Sundays. Do send in your prayer requests. As we pray daily, we will remember you, and also on Sunday. Those of you who have changed from envelopes and family purse to direct debit, sending order or bank transfer, thank you very much. Those of you who are thinking about it, I can only encourage you to pay your tithes in this way and do contact me for the bank details of either Holy Innocence or St. Mark. And now for the blessing. The Lord be with you. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and all those whom you love and pray for, this day and always. Amen. Our Mass is ended, and our service to God continues. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.